This is a HeadGum Podcast. Hello, everybody, and welcome to We'll See You in Hell on its new home, HeadGum. We are very excited to be here. Uh, my name is Patrick Walsh. I'm here with my dear friend, Joe DeRosa, after about a month-long hiatus. Um, we're very excited to get to this. Today's movie is called Get Out, directed by Jordan Peele. And now on with the show, and on with the Joe! <laughs> Uh, I've missed it somehow. I've missed hearing you say that. Joe said to me, uh, how are you going to get it on with the Joe in now that we don't have our old uh, pre-written intro? I was like, don't you worry about it, baby. I'll find a way. (laughs) You got got writing in your blood, Walsh. You were born to do it. It's true. It's good to see Uh, you, man. Your dog is shitting on the floor as we speak. This is how our new podcast starts with me watching shit squeezed out of your dog's ass onto your hardwood floor. He, uh, it's a watery shit as well. And now, is he going to eat it? No. Is he going to eat it? <laughs> Joe, if I have to watch this dog no, eat he's shit. going to eat the shit. All right, are you no. going to clean that up, or what he are we... He really did just shit right on the ground there. We, we do an intro. We're happy to be back, and the dog shits on the floor four feet in front of me. Con, why'd you do that? What happened? That was wild. That was real wild. Why did he do that? I don't know, but it's it's not a great omen. I'll say that. Him, I just took him out a little while ago, and he just shit. I don't know. Did, I, did you go to an Indian buffet or something? God damn it. Oh, con. All right, well, you want to take the wheel while I I'll clean up I'll take the this, wheel while uh, Joe cleans up an animal's shit. Um, folks, I just want to say, uh, you know, we, we were never going to not return the show. We were kind of shopping it around and seeing where we'd wind up on our new network. Basically, what happened is Fangoria uh, essentially went under, which is an, a negative way to say it, but it, it is what happened. It's in, flux. it's in flux. It'll probably wind up uh, at a new location as well. But Joe and I dearly love the people at Fangoria for giving us the platform for so long, particularly Ken Hanley, who was always such a great help over there. And they're going to continue on, apparently. And they're apparently going to continue on elsewhere, which I did already no, say. Not they are Fangoria is going to keep going. Okay. Fangoria is going to keep going. So keep looking for them. Uh, there, there's no beef here. Um, you know, uh, aside from Ken holding me out of a uh, hotel window by my knees, Suge Knight style, there, there's really no bad blood. Um, and we wanted to say, I wanted to say, thank you for the really constant tweets um, that we get and comments elsewhere, Instagram, whatever it may be, Facebook about uh how much you guys love and miss we'll see you in hell because it really made us want to get back and we appreciate it we have a new facebook group called we'll see you in hell joe and i are not uh currently running it but um it's fantastic every time i check in i love what i'm seeing it's getting some numbers up thank you for the five star reviews i want to say thank you to chris who approached me right after i saw get out on the streets of los Feliz and said pat I love We'll See You in Hell, and then gave me a hearty, and now on with the Joe. Yes. Which I thought was a beautiful thing. Chris, thank you. You made me feel like a, a big-time star. You want to give us a blow-by-blow blow of the shit cleanup? Joe's almost done. Um, we, got it, we got it up. Luckily, it's a brown floor, so if there is standage, we don't know. Um. We're going to talk this week about Get Out. First, we're going to update you with, uh, I guess I'll go into my my normal segment. And since this is the first time, basically we have a real loose, lax approach to our segments where we often forget to do them. Um, Oftentimes, we're not even really sure what the other person's segment is. But uh, the bulk of the show is me and Joe yelling at each other and talking about a new horror or sci-fi movie each week. That, you know, eventually goes off into wild other tangents. Um, what I have seen in the interim, I saw 
uh, the Lego Batman. All right, I'm back. You, well, don't start the segment without me. You know, just give me give me a second. Stretch. But usually the segment is me talking about. Well, it's both movies of us. I've seen. It's actually both of us talking about movies we've seen. And I'd also like to add, it's never the two of us not knowing what the segment is. It's Pat not knowing what the segment is because the guy's got a wet brain. I don't know what to tell you, folks. I mean, he sounds like a nice guy on this podcast. I have a, I have a thousand things going on is my oh. excuse. Oh, he, he rolled in today like Mr. Hollywood. He's wearing a sweatshirt that literally says cool on it. <laughs> and he's wearing sunglasses. Uh, well, it's sunny. And this is a sweatshirt that I own that was clean. My, my life is falling apart. Uh, <laughs> uh, let's let's do good. And on to Pat's movie roundup. Pat's movie roundup. I saw. You saw the Lego Batman the Lego movie. Batman. And I'm glad you're bringing this up because it's everything wrong with this country right now. Oh, wow. All so right. So let's talk about now, a, it. A, have you seen it? No. Okay, no, that's because I refuse to participate. Interesting claim to make, having not seen the film. But I but refuse go ahead. to participate in a culture uh, and an activity where where people somehow have a have a lust and offer Lego Batman, yet they shit Joe, all over the Joe, real Batman. If you're going to talk about Batman versus Superman, I will walk back out the door. I, uh, listen, I'll, I'll shit on your floor like your dog did, <laughs> and then I will walk out. I got to tell you something: the Golden Raspberry nominees and and awards, whatever happened, yeah, worst. Screen worst movie Batman Super worst movie did it win yes all right Joe that that's ins- that should tell you something that's insane that's it be dirty oh. grandpa give me a fucking break you're gonna tell me there's not a vendetta against this movie I I thought I had forbid you from ever discussing Batman versus Superman again well, it you- takes Joe to a, a bad place it's why I don't talk about Time Warner Cable I go off on on dark tears and I can't come back from. Do you think that Dirty Grandpa is a better film than Batman versus Superman? Can I say this with a hundred percent truth? Yes. You're you're fucking nuts. You're I, out of your fucking mind. I hated them both, but Dirty Grandpa was a ninety minute comedy that sort of passed the time. It was offensive. It it sucked, but it wasn't like boring, and it didn't take two and a half, two forty five of my life. It took ninety minutes. That's why I prefer. Dirty crap. Oh, God. Yeah. All right. So you liked Lego Batman. Big surprise. There's a couple decent jokes. Manzoukas is funny and Dirty Grandpa. Uh, the Lego Batman I did not love. I thought the first Lego movie was hilarious and I really loved it. Lego Batman looked awesome. It had a very, very funny first 20 and then it just kind of started losing me. But it's a fine movie. All right. I think a big problem with it was... Uh, I saw Galifianakis was playing like the, a very insecure Joker. Oh, I don't like that. I was like, that sounds funny, but he didn't bring much to it. I don't like an insecure. I like Galifianakis. I don't like an insecure I Joker. I love Galifianakis, but yeah. Make the Joker crazy, but in a funny way. Yeah, I don't know. It, w- it wasn't my bag, but it wasn't terrible. All right. I saw John Wick Chapter 2. I know you did as well. What were your thoughts? Uh, I loved every minute of it. I uh, enjoyed it thoroughly. thought the first John Wick had a better storyline. Because it dealt with the loss of his wife and that sort of thing. And the dog. And the dog. I and thought that, like, these movies are only as good as their, you know, why he's killing everyone in sight. And this one, yeah, it didn't have well, the, I don't, the I, heart, I guess you would say. I, it didn't have quite the heart, but I enjoyed watching it more than the first one. Uh, because I don't think... Oh, I didn't. But I, I liked it quite a bit. I don't think these movies are just the heart. I think like a big part of these movies is how crazy will he kill people? Yes. And boy, does he kill people. He kills Sp- a lot of people. Spoiler alert, if you haven't seen it, uh, my favorite part in the movie was the montage when everybody gets the text to kill him. Yes. And it's just that montage of him killing several people at once yes. that are trying to kill him. And then... I mean, I saw it opening night in Hollywood when he picks up the pencil. I mean, people went fucking crazy. Yeah. People went fucking crazy. So that was a lot of fun. I really enjoyed it. Uh, but I, I like the first one, too, uh, for for di- slightly different reasons. Fair enough. Yeah. What I saw uh, Tony Erdman, which was a nominee for uh, Best Foreign Film this year. And it's being remade with Kirsten Wig and Jack Nicholson. Which Kristen is- Wig. Kristen Wiig. I went with Kirsten, and I'm sticking to it. What's wrong? Well, she lives in my neighborhood. If I yelled out Kirsten, oh, I bet you'd turn and look. I mean, what, what is with you? What are you turning into? You come in here with your cool sweatshirt. <laughs> it I've says got, Cools. I've I don't a, understand it either. It says Cools. I think it's the Coors logo. It's the audacity that you're wearing it. I, I, I don't think the sweatshirt with. says I'm cool. 
it's a very uncool, boring sweatshirt. No, it's it's a very uncool and a sort of hipstery, ironic. Oh, I am wow. from Hollywood kind of way. All right. Now you're dropping names about your neighbors. You want to tell everybody who else lives in your neighborhood? Andy McDowell. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, some names. That's all I'm saying. All right, go ahead. Uh, Tony Hinchcliffe. What's this movie called? <laughs> Tony, Tony Erdman. All right. Um. Yeah, Joe's dog is starring in Oni Turdman. Oh boy, next month. Uh, Tony Erdman is about a. It's yeah, it's being remade with Kristen Dunst and Jack Nicholson. Kristen Wiig, pet. Oh my God, people! That was the Matt Kirsten Dunst, Kristen Wiig, and Kristen Wiig is the one in the movie. What is the matter with they're, you? There are two actresses <laughs> who I love, folks. And I'm not trying to be Hollywood. I got a lot of shit going on. <laughs> I wake up every morning trying not to scream. <laughs> And then I go through my whole day. I have uh, currently in both of my hands fingernail marks in both of my hands, like a stigmata, which is a terrible horror movie starring Miss Patricia Arquette. <laughs> and I know that's the correct pronunciation. Right. Arquette. Arqueef it is. Arqueef, yes. Yeah. Uh, anyway, it's being remade. That's perfect casting. This movie is three hours. The remake will be two hours. I'm sure it'll be funny, but they'll probably fuck it up. It was an insane comedy about this girl, woman, who's 40 years old. She's very, very stressed out at work. She's one of these people who's obsessed with work and has no time for fun or pleasure. Her dad hates to see this, and basically he's like, before I pass on, I'm going to make it my goal to get her to loosen up. Right. But he never tells her he's going to do that, and he does it in this insane way where he dresses up with fake teeth and a horrible wig as this character named Tony Erdman. Who doesn't exist and shows up at all of and her? She doesn't know that it's him. She knows. Nobody else knows. And she's a, at first uh, appalled, and then eventually she finds she learns the life lesson. Right? It's it's it, it's going to be that in the Hollywood version. This was a insane, like almost X-rated movie. They, they fuck at the end of this. They one. don't fuck. But he keeps showing up at her business events and parties, like in this ridiculous wig and teeth. Kristen wig. Yeah, a ridiculous Kristen wig. It is really, really funny and really, really crazy. There's a, a cum scene in the middle of this thing that the audience like <laughs> cleared out as though a bomb had been thrown into the theater. It was all these old people because it's an artsy theater. I mean, everyone was clearing out. It was a wild time. If, they, if the movie comes out and it's rated PG-13, <laughs> they've already fucked it up. But Nicholson and Wig in these parts are going to destroy it if they keep the movie the same. I don't know that they will. All right. Uh, I loved it. That's about all I got, except a, a, a DVD recommendation would be Hunt for the Wilder People, which I thought was hilarious, and there's a Lord of the Rings joke in it that made me laugh for 10 minutes. All right. I saw uh, I saw her. I finally saw Green Room. How'd you like it? On the plane. Loved it. Thought on a it was plane? A, I, I hate when people watch a great movie on a plane. I watched it on my Amazon Prime on an airplane. Why on is your that? phone, right? No, on my iPad, and I put the earphones in, and I watched it. What's wrong with that? I, I hate thinking of people watching a great movie on, well, I on a en- device. <sighs> Only old-fashioned. I Can I say it? I enjoyed it thoroughly. It was very good. All I was right. a little confused as to what the bad guy's plan was, you know, because I was having a hard time understanding Patrick Stewart. Okay. Uh, but, 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 you know, when he would say, like, I tried to buy it. We're staging up the road. Yeah, like I was like, what are they yeah. staging? What the hell is going on? Yeah. But I knew that at the end of the day, they were trying to kill the people in the green room, and I really liked it. I loved it. Did you feel like the punk stuff was as accurate as a movie can be? Uh, I thought it was as good as you're going to get. I it's, know you played bass for Blink-182 for many years. Yes, yes. You're a, you're a true punk. Yeah, yeah. And I sang bass uh, for uh, for Green Day in the American Idiot Broadway tour, you portrayed like Jim Bass. No, no, no. I sang bass bass parts in the chorus. Oh, okay. Like Mike Durnt. No, that's the bass guitar. I sang bass in a choir. The chorus. Oh, okay. The chorus. Jesus. Just be just be clear. Just kill a fucking joke, man. Just be clear. I don't know if I killed it. I think uh, <laughs> the work was done before I arrived on the scene, officer. Uh, I, I like the movie quite a bit. Uh, I, I, you know, that, that, that whenever there's that self-conscious of a decision that it's going to be about a punk band, there's... Let me put a pause on here. We should probably do a, a Green Room episode, right? Uh, we could, but I mean, you talked about it a decent All right, length carry before. On, carry on. But could, here's the thing. We are going to do an episode. So I loved it. We are going to do an episode. In fact, it'll be next episode. Probably. 
uh, about a movie we have discussed already, and I will just mention it briefly here because I also watched this on the plane. Little pile of shit <laughs> called The Neon Demon. Oh, okay. That, that, that you sang the praises of so many months ago. I can't wait to discuss this fucking movie. That with was you. a movie where I said, I don't think anyone would like it, but I loved it. Well, so I understand. We're going to get into that. Really, the, as say, you'll see, if, if you go back through our archives, which are going to be available on HeadGum, maybe, hopefully, a, a lot of you came over from Fangoria, but if you're new fans, uh, or, you, or if you hate it, either way, I don't care if you're hate listening, we still get the numbers. Ha ha. Uh, the episodes where Joe and I disagree are probably the strongest, because we, uh, we argue, and, and the anger is always very real, and I think people <laughs> respond to that. Um but uh, when we agree, as I'm pretty sure we're going to on, on today's film, we'll, we'll definitely find some side things to argue about. Don't you worry. We wanted to kind of bring you in carefully and easily, like when you're kind of just, you know, uh, you know, you kind of graze your tip along the outside before you enter. Of the V? You kind of move it back and make sure you're good to proceed. Your P against the V. Yeah. You PV. Got, that you got was a high school moisture where, I, where your, I grew up. Yeah. It's called PV, Perkiomen Valley. Yes. Uh, yeah, so we'll, we'll get into Neon we're Demon. We're easing you in show. because we're talking about a movie that you'd have to be a damn fool not to love on today's show. Uh, yes, we will get into Neon Demon next time. Uh, what else have I seen? I watched front to back the entire series, or first season, excuse me, of Channel Zero. Uh, what do you think? That is the sci-fi anthology horror series. Uh, I enjoyed it. I thought it was very well done. Uh, it was a little... It, it, the, the territory ha has been, uh, um... Tra traverse is that the word uh eh, not really but no i got it tr what tr well trod territory Trotted territory okay. yeah the uh it's you know because it's about a bunch of kids that get involved in some sort of evil demony thing so so it's very it it's very stranger things it's you know but it was very good i i thought they did a great job i look forward to seeing uh what they do next season oh it's kids stumbling up it's the same kids in each episode no, next, like season, anthology show. next season will be a new story. But I thought this was a really good first outing. All right. It's not, a, it's not like a Twilight Zone where every week's different? No, it's, just, and it's an anthology, but it's like the way American Horror Story is, where every season is different. Got it. Uh, I don't know if they'll have recurring... I don't know if they'll have actors come back to play different characters or not. But I am not a fan of American Horror Story. Uh, I think it tries way too hard. I and, dropped out years ago. Yeah, it comes off way too Marilyn Manson for my taste. Uh, but but this show, I thought they did a you good job. You mean because job. the show removed its rib so it could suck its own dick? Yeah, well, yeah. That, there's that. There's and other you mean stuff. because the show was Paul from the Wonder Years when it was a kid? Remember when that rumor? <laughs> I remember it well. Was going around? There's that. There's the uh, Richard Gere gerbil. There's the Rod Stewart had to have his stomach pumped and a bunch of cum came out. I don't believe any of these stories, but they were all big even when I was in uh, grade school, heard them all the time. Uh, uh, all right, so that's that's the roundup of what we've seen. Let's move on to Joe's scary stuff. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> you know, always gets a laugh. It's not a great title. <laughs> Joe's scary stuff. Well, what do you want from me? I, I try, you know? Uh, I know. I know. This week I'm highlighting uh, the release of a uh, DVD, or Blu-ray, excuse me, uh, and again, this is not a review of the movie itself. It's just something worth buying. It's a product. Uh, but Shout Factory has released the Texas Chainsaw Massacre 2 Special Edition Blu-ray. We have not discussed this, I don't believe, right? We haven't, but I th <laughs> I'm not doing a bit here. I thought Joe's Scary Stuff was about things that aren't movies that are scary. Yeah, because you're just adding on another movie that you I'm said. not adding on a movie. What I you wanted, don't know what your own segment what is. What I wanted to talk about was how good of a job they did with the Blu-ray. I mean, I'll allow it, but it's not part of Joe's scary stuff. And the special stuff. features. Right. And the special features. Uh, look, you want, it's look, supposed to be like books, video games, things in the horror genre. I'll do genre. scary stuff all goddamn day with you, dude. Resident Evil 7 just came out. You Bio talked about it on the last one. Resident Evil, no. I mentioned Resident Evil 4 two ago. And the last one was when I talked about... Uh, uh, the uh, DVD service Horror Pack. Okay. Uh, so Resident Evil 7 Biohazard is out. It's a great game. Everybody's loving it. Uh, it's supposed to be phenomenal. Blah, blah, blah. Who gives a shit? You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> um, I will actually 
do your your own uh, segment correctly and talk about a book I'm in the middle of called Outrageous Conduct, Art, Ego, and the Twilight Zone Case by Stephen Farber. Well, and I also have another thing I can do. So well, go ahead. We can alternate. Uh, <laughs> this book is about the John Landis segment of the Twilight Zone, which, of course, killed actor Vic Morrow, Jennifer Jason Leigh's father. And also the two Vietnamese children that he was holding decapitated them yeah, all. Yeah, that he was that were being overworked. They were being overworked, and Land, Landis basically kept going, "Get the helicopter closer to them, closer, closer, closer," until they were decapitated. <laughs> and there was a lot of cocaine on the set. It yeah. was '83. I love John Landis. I think he's directed some of the best comedies of our time. Uh, obviously, his career <laughs> fell apart after this, pretty much, except he still did Three Amigos and Coming to America, which are fantastic. But him, Spielberg, a lot of people in this book do not come off well, and it's a fascinating look into that time. And people that, especially Spielberg, you think of being like a sweet uh, grandpa at this point, but apparently Landis' first call, because Spielberg was a producer, was to Spielberg. Like, holy shit, like, we just killed three people. And Spielberg's immediate response was, you better have a real good fucking publicist. (laughs) I was like, okay, that's an interesting uh, way to that respond segment, to the death of three human beings. But that segment was supposed to end differently. That story was supposed to end with the guy learning his lesson about being a racist, which would have been a very Twilight Zone ending. Yeah, it's all discussed in that book. Instead, it's it ends with him being carted away uh, by the Nazis with no yeah. no mercy. Uh, And this is what's, uh, as some of the listeners may know, The Twilight Zone is my favorite TV show of all time. Uh, I am obsessed with it. I own every episode from all three iterations of it. Uh, And I also own the movie. And my problem with the movie has always been that it is far too sinister for The Twilight Zone. The Twilight Zone is supposed to be scary and creepy um, and freaky, but there's also supposed to be a social commentary to it. And it's not about comeuppance. Tales from the Crypt is about comeuppance. Uh, but the Twilight Zone movie is very uh, sinister. You know, the, the opening segment is a great opening segment with Dan Aykroyd and Albert Brooks. Yeah. But it, it's basically Dan Aykroyd is a demon man and he kills Albert Brooks and there's no real reason for any of it. And that's not the Twilight Zone. That's that's straight horror. So uh, I, I would have liked to have seen the finished version. I would like two young boys to still be alive uh, so they would be grown men now, and I'd like to still see Vic Morrow's work. So it's all very tragic. Um, I met Dan Aykroyd two times. I'm going to do his more name dropping. When I was uh, working as a page at 30 Rock, and the first was he came to an SNL after party, offered me cocaine. Could not have been nicer, but, I mean, he's he was 55 or 60. He offered me cocaine. I'm like, no, I'm good. He was there. Well, I'm hesitant to say anything because he's a married man, but he was uh, <laughs> he was having a real good time and like love blowing up spots, offering everyone thing. cocaine. He was he was being fine, but he was like the life of the party. And there was an element of, of a little bit of tragedy about it because he was trying to live like it was 75 on the set of SNL. And, you know, he's like your dad. And you didn't do coke with him. You fucking pussy. I hadn't done coke at the time. I oh. didn't do it till I met. Joe DeRosa. Oh, stop And it. then I hated it, and I'm so thankful I hated it because I have an addictive that's personality. Not, that's not true. You did it before I ever knew you. I didn't introduce you to a drug. The first time I did it, I did it with you. Really? That's 100% true. Well, I'm flattered. Uh, and I didn't like it. sound it. like I'm the Dan Aykroyd of this podcast. No, folks. I mean, jo- Joe rarely offers me any cocaine. <laughs> He's always... Uh, <laughs> doing it but he never offers it up stop it that's not true all right um and then the other time he came to conan and if you want to hear a real dark story and it sucks because he was nice but this was perhaps due to the years of cocaine use decades of cocaine use he's like afterwards he goes so how are we going to handle this i'm supposed to walk him down to his uh car on the street after his segment on conan i go handle what he's like well the the fans and the paparazzi and everything and I was like, oh, no, because we, huge stars re- often like they don't know that they're coming to Conan. You have a few uh, autograph seekers, but that's it. And he comes down and he's like up against the wall, like a Tom and Jerry cartoon. Like, how are we going to handle all these people? And I look around and there's like one guy in a wheelchair okay. like looking to get something signed. And Aykroyd sprints out past him. He was like, can you walk with me? Like, he, he thought that I was going to, like, block the, the throngs of fans. 
Oh, God. And then he sprinted out, almost like an Elwood Blues-style run with his knees up high, ran out of 30 Rock to his car. It was real rough, and it, it made me realize, like, you got to really roll with the ups and downs in this business, baby. You can't think like it's uh, it's uh, 75 when it's uh, 2005. You're not, sure. you're not on top anymore, baby. Sure, yeah. That's a, that's a rough one. That's yeah. a rough one. Yeah, at least, that's it. At least she's doing coke. At least he's got sweet, sweet uh, cocaine. To close out the Joe Scary stuff segment, uh, I, I will uh, plug. I mean, again, these are not people sponsoring me to say this. These are just things I think our fans would enjoy. If you like old school video games, I'm on a big Nintendo throwback kick since the uh, NES Classic came out. I just picked up a Super Nintendo the other day. But if you like that sort of thing, uh, two games that fall into the sci-fi genre and the sci-fi horror genre... Uh, they did ports of, uh, I believe, the first six or seven Mega Man games on the, uh, on the, for the Apple iPad and iPhone. Uh, and they also did a great port of R-Type, uh, which is really fantastic. I would suggest playing them on the pad because it's bigger. You have more space. You're going to be using virtual buttons. The phone's a little small for my taste unless you have that jumbo iPhone. But they are excellent, excellent, excellent ports, uh, and uh, they're right. Uh, the, the, you're going to love it, so just go get that shit, okay? And that's the segment, Pat. And again, because this segment always veers strangely close to an ad, these are not paid advertisements. I said that already. All right, all right. Now. That's why I said end again. Let's talk about the movie. Get Out is the movie this week. Jordan get Peele. Out. And Get Out, folks. Is, is certainly the best horror movie of this year, and I would say the best in quite a few years. And it does what... I mean, there's whole documentaries about how horror in the 70s and stuff would be talking about Vietnam or talking about race, talking about all kinds of issues. But it's been a while till there was really any sort of... Since there was any sort of commentary in a horror movie, unless I'm forgetting something, or, or unless it was very stupidly handled. Well, I, would, I, I think that the comment, this type of commentary found in a horror movie hasn't been seen in a while. I think a long other, while. Too long. I think other movies do have a commentary. It's much more subtle. Yeah. Uh, but, uh, but, you know, this is, you know, the comparisons to get at the... the you the, know how, the, like, The Fly was an allegory for AIDS, but right. you know, The Fly came out in 1986. It, it's much rarer, and I wish there were more because it gives... The horror genre, which is always in the ghetto, a great deal of legitimacy, and it makes people talk about them much more seriously than they would ordinarily. Well, the movie that this is compared to pretty consistently in the reviews and, and, and write-ups that I've read is The Stepford Wives. Sure. So you have movies like The Stepford Wives or like Get Out that have a very overt statement being made, and then you have other things like uh, Friday the 13th Yeah. that is sort of a... Uh, a much subtler statement about teen sex and the dangers of misbehaving and that sort of thing. Do you think that was the intent of a Friday the 13th? Because uh, I don't. Absolutely. I absolutely do. All right. I don't think it was to scold them. Yeah. I think it was just a commentary on, on the times of All right. teenagers being scolded. We should, uh, again, it's a very professional show. We did not do even a brief synopsis of the film, which we well, we're, we're getting to said it. I we was, would do. I wasn't going to let us not do it. Get out. It's written and directed by the great Jordan Peele of Key and Peele fame. Right. Um, so people ask, you know, well, he's funny. Is it a comedy? Truthfully, yes. It's an extremely dark comedy. It's But it doesn't detract from the horror. And it doesn't feel like a comedy like Scream where it's parodying a genre. Um, basically, the gist of it is a, uh, a young African-American gentleman is dating a young white woman. They've been dating three or four months. She's going to take him home to meet her parents. He gets there. Parents are Bradley Whitford and Catherine Keener, who are both great, as are Allison Williams. And what is the young gentleman's name? I don't know, because I've never seen him in anything. I, just, I think I'd mispronounce it. I think he was on a Black Mirror. I'm going to look it up now. I've never seen him before. I did notice he was not a Black Mirror because I did notice there were a couple times where I was like, wait a minute, does he have an English accent? Yeah, he well, he is British. Yes. Okay, that's. I, I thought I heard it slip through a few times. Uh, and my buddy, Little Rel, is in the film. So funny. Uh, as the best friend, and he just hits a home fucking run, man. Uh, yeah, well, I mean, we'll just, tell you when there's going to be spoilers, but I, I have never heard a cheer in a movie since that fan, uh, Force Awakens as I did at the end of this movie. Like, yeah, I yeah. Mean, he, that guy is so... He's funny. 
And there were moments where it threatened to go a little too big to keep the horror real, but they never did. Like he kept it very legitimate. The guy is so is is so great. He's a, he's a, if you've never seen Little Rel do stand up, do yourself a favor, go see it. It's he's 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 you know gut dare I say gut bustingly funny. Yeah, but I mean he's the kind of comic that I watch and I retell the jokes to people. Uh, and he hits a, a just a grand slam in this movie. Everybody's great in the movie. I mean, yeah, he's he's a complete star from the second you see him. But anyway, Daniel, Daniel Kaluuya is the actor, and I didn't want to say Kaluuya, which is what I almost said. Not that it's that far off, but I didn't want to be like the guy who says Shyamalan Ding Dong or something and be offensive. <clears throat> Daniel Kaluuya, he was in the uh, actually one of my lesser favorite Black Mirrors, the one where the guy uh, is in like war times and they're telling him they're killing bugs and all that kind of stuff. All right. But uh, she goes up up top and, and he reads the strange behavior at home as being judgment on their interracial relationship. But actually something much more sinister is going on. Yeah. The and title know, itself is kind of genius because it's basically like get out of our country. And like, of course, this was made pre Trump, but like there really could not be a more timely way to handle this subject matter than in a horror movie where. The comedy is great, the horror is great, and the social commentary is great. They're all 10 out of 10s. Like, you can't do much better than this. Yeah, uh, and you know pretty much from the jump. I mean, the, the, there's a. Re- I was talking to a friend of mine, and he said, well, I want to see it, but I feel like the commercial gives too much away. And I said, the commercial doesn't give too much away. The commercial gives you a lot of information because I feel like the movie is bigger than the plot and the twists and whatever. The yeah. movie really is about the satire and the social commentary of it all because you know right off the bat there's a line very in the first scene or whatever between the the couple where allison williams what was the guy what's the guy's name again daniel kaluuya so where daniel to use daniel's character says uh uh, uh, I'm a little nervous, you know, I'm paraphrasing, but, but your parents don't know I'm black. Are they going to be okay with it? And Alison Williams says, my dad would have voted for Obama a third time if he could have. Huge groan in the theater. So yeah. right off the bat, you know, at the very least, we're dealing with some guilty white people here that are saying the wrong shit. Yeah. And then it's obviously going to snowball from there. And it does. Tr- and those, those early scenes, which are, you know, almost like meet the parents and got similar giant laughs are Whitford, who is really fucking good in this, like just saying all the things that your dad would say if you're if, this, if you're white. Uh, my dad would say if he was trying to make an African-American person feel more comfortable, but in doing so, makes them significantly more uncomfortable. Well, the one thing he says that I don't think a lot of dads would say is, and it's in the commercial, and it's very uncomfortable, when he goes, how long has this been going on, this thing? Yeah. That's very uncomfortable. Yeah. He kind of yeah. shows his cards real early with that one. Yes. But Whitford is great and somehow plays a bigger piece of shit than I've ever seen Whitford play. And and Whitford always plays a piece of shit. The first time Whitford was on my radar was playing a huge old piece of shit trying to kill Billy Madison's good time. Billy Madison. And delivered my favorite line in Billy Madison when he's mad because his friend didn't offer him Trisket crackers. He goes, you know I'm hungry. He didn't offer me Trisket crackers. And he goes, no, I'm sorry. He goes, well, that doesn't put the delicious Trisket crackers in my stomach now, does it? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, Whitford's great. I'm a big fan. When he first was on my radar, was Revenge of the Nerds two. Oh, he plays sure. The villain. Yeah, that's he right. He plays the head like fraternity. Ju- Let's go bash some nerds. Like yeah. he, he's always that guy. Yeah, but he's great at it. And I don't. I kind of don't want to see him play anything else. It's probably oh, he's son of a woman. Yeah, that's right. That scene is my favorite scene in Scent of a Woman. West which- Wing. He was a he was a good person, but he still had a bit of of swarm about him. Yeah. Um, so. Uh, but the, but home run Kathleen Keener everybody was really good. We need to really uh, you got to praise fucking Jordan Peele who's never directed anything and never written a movie. And when I heard he was doing a horror movie, I I wasn't skeptical at all. I knew it would be interesting, but I you know I well I I, I'm, I, I this is what happens is now that you work in this business you start to shit on something and then you realize you shouldn't. So I don't and I won't. But folks. I love Jordan Peele, and I think that this is one of the best debuts of my lifetime. It's, I mean, 
the to to get uh, to get something that this theater was like might as well have been on its feet by the end of this fucking thing. The ending of that I went I saw it with a buddy of mine. I look over at him and he's wiping tears from his eyes and there's there's nothing emotional in it. But he was just like, I realized that I was so stressed out that like I I started crying. Like it's the the horror works so well. But really, what you're thinking about, and what I'm thinking about a week later, and why I'm going to see it again as soon as possible, is what it's saying. And I think it 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 does it in such a way that the white people in the audience can feel like, oh, well, that's not me, and I'm better than that. But it also does it in a way that makes you be like, I've been that guy before. I've said that before. I've made somebody feel uncomfortable before. Um, I think that's what's kind of genius about it. And the get out is the perfect title because that's essentially what i mean trump's not saying get out black people but he's saying get out a lot of people and that's really what the the point of the movie is is that america wants to use black people um for their athletic ability their their entertaining ability their coolness their this and that um but they don't want to treat them as equals and it's disgusting and that is essentially what's going on in the movie's head which is what makes it, I think, the best. As you keep talking about this, I'm getting more and more nervous. Why? Because <laughs> we're revealing. Oh, you think I'm going to say something stupid? I, I'm. Yeah, it's making me nervous. I'm just that, and that's the beauty of it. I'm just telling you exactly what the movie is about. It's about white people essentially using black people, and not realizing they're doing it. Uh, do you think it's about them not realizing they're doing it or them not caring that they're doing it? Both. Yeah. I think, well, I mean, these people obviously don't care. The but, white, the, the evil But I think, I think who it's really going after is the people who are sitting in that audience at the Los Feliz 3 when I saw it and the people that you and I have a real hard time stomaching, the people who think that they are um, super progressive it's, let's but just, are actually gross. Let's it's like, just, you know how Jamie Kilstein, let's talk about Jamie Kilstein. Steen. Steen, you know yeah. that dude? But let's just look, you can you Perfect can, example. He's a you he's, can he's simple, an outspoken hold, hold feminist hold on, hold on. and you, you find can, out he's been harassing women online. Well, he's been accused of it. We we, we, we Come on, we're, Joe. we're not here to condemn. We don't we're not the judge or jury, but he's been I, accused I will. of it. I'll judge him. He's he's been accused of it yeah. and uh you know, I'm not a fan, but uh you know, uh, I don't know anyone who is. And I wouldn't be surprised if he did do the things that people are saying because it's usually the loudest voice is the most corrupt. You know? That's what I'm saying. And, or is the and I, th- I thought that was a big undercurrent of Get Out as well. But you, there's an easier way for you to say this. There's, Joe, an, easier, you, there's I, an easier way for you to say he's, he's, who you're trying to talk about. Yes. Most of our friends. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> yeah. Most of the people we know patting themselves on the back. Yes. I'm so good. I'm so understanding. <laughs> I mean, it, what really killed me, I mean, you want to get into this. The Oscars. You want to talk about something here? The Oscars. Yeah, the Oscars aired on Sunday. To I've, watch. This is going to drop on Monday, so it'll be a week ago. But you know, you know what we're talking about. To watch so many celebrities that I've seen publicly condemn Trump yeah. for being a self-centered businessman who only cares about money and doesn't give a shit about poor people. And to see these same people stroll down a red carpet. Oh, this is Giovanni Berdine that I'm wearing, or whatever yeah. fucking designer they're wearing, with these six, seven, ten thousand dollar dresses and and tuxedos on. Fuck you. Yeah. Fuck you. Yeah. It's so fucking gross. It's so fucking gross. And then as they partake in this event that has perpetuated every type of entertainment in our popular culture that has allowed a man like this to become president. Yes. The city that is that is fucking just just conveyor belt pro- produced reality TV for the last 20 years that has only worshipped the dollar for the last oh, yeah. 70 years. It's so fucking gross. And they all act like, oh, no, it's not me. It's just, isn't that? A, no, it is you. It's you. Yeah. It's you. Of You're course. as much a part of this fucking problem as anybody else. So anyway. Couldn't agree more. Well, let's see if I keep that tone when I get nominated. No, I mean. I, if I ever. I, I feel probably the same never way. Will, I mean, the people, the people get up there and it's like. Like, I, I mean, here's another thing. I, get, I assume she was a producer of Moonlight, but when they finally corrected the vote and Moonlight went up there, I, I'm going to have to agree that Moonlight is the best picture. But everyone feels, I think really truly feels, judging by Twitter and almost everyone I know, every, everyone that saw La La Land before the hype started fucking loved it. Then I see people, like, now shitting on it because at some point it got misconstrued that La La Land is a racist movie. 
because Ryan Gosling is a white guy who likes jazz. So uh, that level of sensitivity is so ludicrous to me, but people won't even admit they like it anymore. And then when they saw that La La Land had won, the all, all of America, at least the people on Twitter, were vocally talking about how this is a racist country because a movie won a thing? Like, what are you talking about? Of course it is a racist country, but not because of that. Then Moonlight rightly wins and it's like oh okay so what now racism ends because moonlight won what the fuck are you talking about Well, that's and again let's get back to get out that's the beauty of get out the be- that's the beauty of the grown moments when the things come out of the white characters mouths in the movie yeah is because you know that jordan peele has his finger on i know you think you're not racist but what you just said was racist yes he's got his finger on that pulse it's expertly done it takes shots equally at 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 uh, at elitist conservatives as much as it does as at guilty liberals i i really just think it's a it is a brilliant brilliant commentary on the uh on race relations in america and s- smaller things in it like keener hypnotizes him very early on in the movie and she's doing it with a silver spoon well i pointed that out to you the other day but if you want to take it now and do you and make it sound like you thought of it that's fine <sighs> But I point that out to you the other day. I said to you literally the exact words, the attention to detail, the fact that her hypnotic device is a silver spoon. <sighs> I mean, you just you just take it. What is the matter with you? The, what is the matter with you? The beam of light this when is they're the taking... Problem. This is what the movie's talking about. You're an arrogant no, no, white Joe. pig. Joe, this isn't, thinks, this isn't what the movie is talking about. <laughs> that thinks he can just throw his balls around on everything how do you know the end of that sentence which i did not get to finish was as joe pointed out because it wasn't you're not gonna you're not gonna massage my balls um, into theft into thinking it's okay that you just stole that but it's okay i'm not thieving what what was an idea that was in the movie it wasn't you, your idea and i'm you, taking credit when for i said it. it to you you said i didn't notice that that's really cool all right fair fair joe you, you didn't say you that that was a lie me. i lied about that part yeah i didn't say it <laughs> Jesus, this is a wild time. Uh, but there's there's an element with a camera in the movie and what the camera does to people in the movie. I'm not going to spoil that. But just these things that, like, they work brilliantly as simply horror, but then a week later you're just like, fuck, that's exactly right. That's perfect. That's per- And nothing is showy or calling attention to itself, but it's also not so obscure that like somebody tells you, you know, Home Alone is an allegory for the Holocaust or whatever, and you're like, no, you're an idiot. It's all there. Yeah, it's not Room. What's that documentary? Oh, uh, yeah, the, the Shining. The Shining one makes yeah. me want to spit. Room two thirty six or whatever. Uh, um, and it's the just, only line. The only line I didn't. The only. It's a. It's well. It's it's only one line, but it is. It does affect the 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 pop, the, the film. Uh, and this is literally my only criticism. I didn't like when the main character said to the guy from uh, news radio, spoiler Stephen alert, Root. spoiler alert, when, when you know, he finds, figures out what's going on and everything, and he goes, why black people? And Stephen Root goes, I don't know, you know, why not? Why anybody? You know? Yeah. I, that was the only line I didn't like. I, I, I actually thought that sold the weight of it a little short because there was clearly a reason they were only going after black people. I thought. Yes. Well, I think that he was uh, painted as as a better than the other people kind of guy. Okay. Because he was blind. He's obviously a monster. What he does in the movie is monstrous. But he's a blind guy who truly doesn't see color because he can't. Oh, that's interesting. And I think he's saying, uh, you know, why not black people? But everybody else can see and is just doing it anyway. All okay. right. Well, So Pat- I think t- that made him a slightly morally better person. I think not really. No, he's a he's a monster, but morally superior to Whitford, for Christ's sake. Uh, well, no, he still buys a human being. <laughs> yeah, from that's another fair. human that's being. Fair. Uh, Pat, maybe I, I just like Stephen Root. I think this was a hell of a kickoff discussion and a hell of an episode one for our fourth season of We'll See You in Hell. I f- yeah, I forget we ha- we we call them seasons just when we forget to do the podcast for a month or two. Then it's like, oh, that was a hiatus and now this is a new season it changes up and it you know whatever but uh we're really thrilled to be here at headgum uh we're 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 very happy to be here uh let's uh let's sign off on some plugs you got anything sure 
Well, a, a personal plug and a business plug. Uh, I know I talked a lot last time about how I was hoping I had a pilot picked up by the CBS network, and I did. So I've been working on that. Um, it's a living nightmare. <laughs> Every aspect of it is worse than I could have ever imagined. Now we are casting. Um, I, I got to tell you, folks, if you're an actor, I, I need to talk to you. I need to talk to you about changing how you're doing things. A lot of bad acting out there. There's a lot of people who are like offer only. You see that next to their name? Which means like like Tom Cruise is offer only. If you're going to put Tom Cruise in a movie, he does an audition. Right. You offer him the role. Right. Also offer only, 50% of actors in Hollywood who have never done a single fucking thing. Well, it sounds, so, like, uh, sounds like you're in your own Jordan Peele movie. Yeah, I, I'm like, hey, I'd love to see this actor try it. I feel like they might be able to do it. But they won't audition. Yeah. I don't trust you off of you being in one episode of Ugly Betty to be the star of a multicam sitcom. Get the fuck over yourself. Not really a plug, just more of a <laughs> shot at somebody <laughs> friends with America Ferrara. No, I, it, well, that wasn't a real person. I just made that up. But the, the ego of these actors, and then people come in, and I'm like, oh, I love this actor, and then they're bad in person, and you're like, oh, I guess you were edited to be good. There are people that you're like, oh, that piece of shit actor, and they come in, and they're amazing. Pat, the um, world is shit, and we live in the we live in the butthole that is spewing all the shit out. So it's terrible. It's all yeah. just the hype machine, and people who are absolutely worthless are celebrated, and people who are amazing are are swept off to the corner because they won't be the ego maniacal maniacs that this town makes you be if you want to succeed. <sighs> and I'm slowly slipping away, sanity wise, because of this whole process. And I have to just keep telling myself every day, Pat, you're funny, and this will all be over soon. All right. And hopefully I'll have a show on the air, but then the whole problem well, just keeps mean, going. Do you want for, the show on the air? It I don't even know. I don't even know. Of, no, of course I want the show on the air. And I'm being very careful not to talk about anybody or anything in particular. I'll just say every aspect of it is beyond frustrating, and I'm trying to do it while also working a full-time job. And, and keeping this podcast going, which takes up about 45 minutes a week, folks. It's a grind. <laughs> Uh, we do it all for you. Do you want to plug something, Pat? On a personal plug, I'd like to plug love. Um, I, I got engaged to my girlfriend of four years. Heather. Pat, do you want to plug something? I told you I have a personal and, and These a, are not, it's not a... That's not a plug. You just, it's just on a therapy couch. Is, is, is gas going to seep into this room if we don't finish in the next Good two fucking Lord. minutes? This happened the other night. You know we what? hung out at the bar the other night. We sit down. Great to see you. I've been gone for a week and a half. Oh. I've been on the road. Great to see you, buddy. What's going on? 90 minutes later, I say, well, that's that's pretty crazy, Pat. I mean, the, for 90 <laughs> minutes, he's screaming at Joe, me in the booth about this goddamn TV show. I've been that voice for you as well, and I would call that friendship. But I guess it's a one-way street in DeRosa Town. Well, Pat, I have always said friendship is only a, a, any kind of ship allows more than one person on board. I don't <laughs> know what that means. I, I really don't know what that means. But um, ships ahoy. I got engaged and maybe they don't at you on it, but a lot of people have asked about it. I'm not going to tell you how I propose because it's my personal life, but I'm engaged. Well, don't get personal as you just blow up the spot about your entire uh, pilot in, inner workings and the I people from Ugly Betty auditioning and Dan Aykroyd trying to give you coke in the bathroom. Literally nobody I mentioned is a real person. There's nobody who did one episode of Ugly Betty. Who th I'm talking about. People in general, I'm not singling out any actors, All right. but uh, God, it's a nightmare. Another way to go there, Joe, would be to say uh, congratulations on either the pilot or getting engaged. I've congratulated you many um, times. And not just shit on it, but the people haven't heard it. You see what I'm saying? Many times. The people have not heard mean, that I'm in. People care about us. They want to know if I'm engaged. They want to know if I got a pilot going. You scream for four minutes about your pilot, and then you passively you go, and I got engaged. Talk for four minutes about the engagement. I don't want to talk because that's my personal private life. So is the other thing. No, it isn't. Why is it not? I've talked about both things on here, and people ask, hey, how's the pilot going? How's the engagement right. going? Listen, congrats. You got engaged. I'm very proud of you. I hope your pilot oh. doesn't go because you will be an insufferable man if now, that show gets picked Can I tell up. you, people, and I'm going to give you 100% guarantee, everyone is much more interested in those two things I just briefly talked about than you saying you're at the Chuckle Factory on uh, July 12th wow, that's really... in Tempe, Arizona. Nobody gives a shit unless they're in Tempe, Arizona. Well, that's very harsh. I'm talking about my life because I feel harsh. like people want to know who we are. 
Notice, notice a thing Pat doesn't do when he's talking about his life. Hey, Joe, how's your life? No, no, none of that. Just we, me, me. You're gonna me. do your plugs next. Me, me, this me. This wasn't me, a conversation. Me. This was my plugs. Me, 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 me. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, you sold your soul to a dirty bastard business, and now you're reaping what you've sown. Suck it up, Daddy. You're in hell, and you made your bed right in the flames. So enjoy it. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> just terrible. I'm sorry. I'm sorry you're feeling down, all right? Tell us more about video games, Joe. I'm just, listen. On a, on a horror I, movie can podcast. Can I plug a thing? I need a favor from the fans. Sure. Also, folks, you can find me at the Patrick Walsh at Twitter and Instagram. Very nice. I follow Pat. It's very enjoyable. Yeah. Uh, look, I'll be at South by Southwest if you're in Austin. Come by. Yeah, Pat, because I get out of this town. I go visit to the regular places. I go talk to the common people. Not like you and your golden <laughs> throne next to Andy what McDowell's house. Uh, what are you talking about? <laughs> Listen, uh, I actually need a favor from the from the fans. Uh, oh. My, my special and album are out now. You let me down. Released by Comedy Central. They're both on iTunes. Me, guys, me, 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 me. Guys, can you do me a favor? Can you do me a favor? You've given us such great reviews on this podcast. A series of trolls have brought all my album ratings down to shit on iTunes and Amazon, and I and I mean that they're trolls. They they they, they weren't people but giving bad reviews. They're trolls. Can you please go give me some, some good reviews on these albums? If you've had them, if you've heard them, if you like them. I'd like to get the ratings up back to where they were supposed to be, which was five stars across the board till the trolls came along. So, and, hey, uh, and also, if you could rate this podcast, which is now on a new network, yeah, that, that'd be great because that's what this is really about. Oh, is it? You sure? Yeah. I thought, it was a, I thought this was about a, another chapter in the life of Walsh. <sighs> Wal, uh I'm ta I'm answering the fans' questions. I'm answering the fans' questions. You think I don't get fans' questions, Joe? How are you in bed, <laughs> Joe? How big is it, <laughs> Joe? Please, Your ego? Will you meet Quite. me? Oh, stop it! All right, I love you, Joe DeRosa Comedy on Twitter and I and uh, Instagram and the Patrick Walsh on both, as we've discussed. Patty, keep the tweets coming. If you guys want to find some archives, you know, one I'd recommend off the top of my head would be the. Uh, Boo a Medea Halloween episode. Joe, what's your favorite of our old ones? Uh, Doctor Strange is one of my favorites. Doctor Strange that, was great. That set me off in ways that I can't even explain. Yeah. Um, we're happy to have you on the new place. We're thankful to HeadGum. Uh, we love you guys, and we're excited to be here. Thank you, everybody. We'll be back next week with probably the Neon Demon, unless things change, but we will do the Neon Demon at some point if you want to watch that and get caught up. Take care. Take care. That was a HeadGum podcast.